Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is the Just Read Instructions, a barge which is out in the middle of the ocean. It is created using Infinite Dice's boat parts, which explains why it's bumping up and down. You can see me repeatedly trying to quick save because it's moving across the surface, and that's going to make landing on it very hard. Did I say landing on it? Why, of course, that's why we're here. We're going to try landing some rockets on it. Now, this is a very basic test vehicle. Let's say it's like the stock grasshopper. So it, we've obviously just parked the just read instructions just off to the off the coast of the Kerbal Space Center there. Now if you're wondering about the name Just Read Instructions, that is of course the name actually used by SpaceX's recovery barge. Elon Musk has apparently been reading a lot of Ian M. Banks recently and uh, clearly this has uh, rubbed off in the name of his uh, ships. I mean, so the ships in Ian M. Banks' culture series tend to be a little eccentric, let's say. I'm just looking at a list on Wikipedia, you have just another victim of the ambient morality, or the precise nature of the catastrophe, or synchronize your dogmas, a series of unlikely explanations. These are all spacecraft name in the Magnificent Culture series books, and it makes me sad every time I think about how the, the author, he just died last year after writing many of my favourite science fiction books. But anyway, I want you to pay attention to the nav ball. Notice how the velocity vector is bumping up and down there. That is because the structure is oscillating across the ocean. The ocean in Kerbal Space Program is perfectly flat, but clearly this isn't. The physics of boat parts are dubious at best. And, oh, we got a landing, we got a landing. Now just, go oh, no, 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 ow. Crikey, bang. Yes. Uh, <laughs> It's still continuing to bump up and down there. Look at that. <laughs> yes, uh, the stock buoyancy is a little dubious, but uh, the buoyancy in boat parts is hardly any better. Anyway, I continue to practice. Now, people will notice there are a lot of reaction wheels on this that does give me very fast control of this very large stage. And this, uh, of course, is just a test vehicle, so I can get a feel for flying something like this. Landing spacecraft on the moon is a lot easier because the spacecraft tend to be smaller and rotate faster and the gravity is lower. Here, if you're even slightly off center, you build up and pick up speed very, very quickly. So you see it took a couple of passes here before I finally managed to position myself over the pad and nope, didn't quite get that. But still, this is all a learning experience. I just have to learn more quickly than I run out of fuel because that water does not do particularly good things to a rocket as it lands in it. And here we go. Bingo. So first successful landing on a barge. And after a bit of practice, I actually start to get pretty good at this. For a time, I was thinking I would write something in Kerbal OS to actually you know, target the object and touch it down on top of it. But I figured with the, the correct instrumentation and enough fuel, it was going to be entirely feasible to touch down on this, on the, the just read instructions. The only problem with this actually I noticed was that my targeting vector was off center, so I needed to fix that in the final version, but there, bingo, bingo, oh, almost falling over, but thankfully reaction wheel spam saves the day. Now we're ready to do it on a slightly bigger scale with a more realistic rocket. And so I present to you LazTech Space X rocket. This is a replica of the Space X Falcon. And what we're going to do is fly it out and figure out where we are going to put our recovery vehicle. So this is just going to be a dry run where we try to launch the spacecraft and then land the first stage somewhere in the ocean safely. At least it will be safe until the waves have their wicked way with the spacecraft and break it up, send it to the bottom of the ocean, etc, etc. So I'm trying to come up with a fairly standard launch profile here because, um, you know, we want it to kind of end up being in roughly the same place. 
By the time we detach this stage and go to land it, we'll probably be moving at about one and a half kilometers per second. So every second difference in the flight path is going to change our position by about one and a half kilometers. So we detach that, fire up its engine and immediately start flipping this thing around using the RCS thrusters. I think the RCS thrusters in this may be in fact a little less powerful than the actual Falcon 9. Anyway, we're going to fire our engine to slow down and I'm going to use the trajectories mod to try and figure out where I'm landing. Now, I made a point of disabling Ferrum Aerospace because I found that while the stock aerodynamics are utterly terrible, they at least are less sensitive to direct to orientation and there's going to be a lot of orientation changes here. So I'm hoping that by disabling Ferrum Aerospace and using stock aerodynamics, I should be able to consistently put this thing down reliably in the same location here. So I'm just using the center engine, right? So that's a single engine out of nine to perform a, a deceleration burn just to bring myself closer to where I think I want to land. And I figure we'll just try to put it down south of that island there. That seems like a suitably quiet part of the ocean. When I detached, I had less than 10% of the fuel capacity of this thing left. But of course, having shut down eight of the nine engines and just using the center one, it means we will get actually about the same amount of time as we uh, had during the initial launch. So that should actually work pretty well here. So now we're just going to descend. The grid fins at the top are to provide aerodynamic control. Of course, they're sitting up the top because you're wanting it to be aerodynamically stable. And by putting them up there, your center of lift is way behind the center of mass. And in theory, it helps keep the thing straight. In theory, we'll get onto that later. But we're going to slow down here, and one kilometer to go. Even with only one engine available, where we have plenty of acceleration here for slowing us down. Now, just have to aim for the zero, 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 the, the sea level here. 300, 200 meters up, we're gonna land in about 10 seconds, and it looks like we're easily gonna get to the surface. Deploy our landing struts here. These are, of course, gonna land us carefully, and perfect touchdown! Wow, and of course the engines are boiling off in the water there, and bang, there it goes, brakes up, but it is a successful landing now to try it for real. So I put a couple of landing vehicles out there, first of all I actually shifted uh, the narwhal all the way out there, the narwhal is a, an aircraft carrier which you may have seen in a previous episode. And then I used that to, you know, basically cheat uh, the barge all the way out there. Funnily enough, the barge, you would put it down and it, I would never get it to float straight. It would always land in the water and decide to go flying around and jump around. But eventually, after editing the save file dozens of times, I actually got it roughly in the right place. So here's me performing my turnover. Again, trying to get roughly into, get it into a decent orbit here, a decent uh, launch trajectory here. Getting down to about, yeah, 1100 units of fuel. Detach the second stage, send it on its way and immediately start turning ourselves around. We can see the island there so you can get an estimate of where we're actually going to land this thing. So I start the engine as we're coming over the top because I kind of want to start my deceleration as quickly as possible. By uh, reducing the apoaps height, of course, it means that we're going to come down a little more quickly and with a little less stress. So there we go, burning, 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 and stop, stop. Okay, so from here, we have this targeted. And the real question is, how close can I actually get? Well. I don't really have any decent feedback, so I'm going to have to... I've got roughly in the right location, but my impact, longitude, and latitude don't actually... I don't have, have a way to compare it against my target, unfortunately. You've got Kerbal Engineer here, but I can't, I can't seem to get that information out of it. So I'm using the aerodynamics here, just trying to move it around, hope that I can get somewhere nearby. The soupy atmosphere is going to kick in and slow me down. This is all one take here. I am as dumbfounded as you guys that I managed to get as close on my first try. 
So you see, I'm, I'm arcing over here using the engines because uh, I need to actually move the engine over. And I start burning the wrong way, you'll notice. I, I really messed that up. I started firing the engine the wrong way. 150 meters per second in reverse. And moving somewhat on target. 100 meters per second. And what happens now is I'm losing it. For some reason, the grid fins are not working the way they're supposed to. And the whole thing just starts falling over sideways. Um, so, if you look at my control inputs and then look at the way those grid fins are moving, they're turning the wrong way. And this control reversal problem is part of standard Kerbal Space Program, so the grid fins don't really help that much. Another hilarious bug is I set this as target and it pauses. It I'm not sure what's causing this to pause, whether it's the boat parts or whatever, but look at that. Look, it decided to change the orbit of my second stage, which wasn't even in my physics range at this point. <laughs> like, there was something really janky with selecting a barge as a target. It would frequently alter my orbit, and if I selected the barge as a target, frequently I would find that when that I would end up moving in completely the wrong direction. For some reason, if I would save it and then target the barge, I would land in a completely different place from if I actually just manually flew it in without touching the barge. So this really gave me this bizarre problem that if I targeted the barge, odds are I would miss the barge by a mile. And if I waited until the last minute, I would have to use the lateral you know, velocity on this thing to try and correct. And that would inevitably lead to an out of control situation because, yeah, this just would happen. Also, that uh, explosion there you're hearing is the narwhal. Whenever it would load within physics distance, it would turn from being an aircraft carrier into being bits and pieces of an aircraft carrier floating on the surface, or perhaps sunk to the bottom of the ocean. And another hilarious moment happened when for some reason my controls locked up, uh, and I just happened to be perfectly on course for the barge. Good news was, I saved that. So I, I had it saved in that state, which meant pretty much I didn't actually need to do any steering from this point onwards, just needed to land it carefully. And that should be super easy, right? Now I've got a saved game where I'm pretty much coming straight down towards the barge. Uh, well, plus obviously the the narwhal exploding in the background here. So I get into the habit of suicide burning. There, 1300 meters up, 100% throttle, and trying to keep this thing under control while watching my liquid fuel diminish rather rapidly. So. Yeah, there we go, and we're just trying to keep this thing lined up. Notice I do not have the thing targeted anymore because I found out that if I clicked to target that, even although the saved game would put me exactly on top of it, it would change my position. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, overshot a little, and now it's a case of actually trying to put this thing down. Only small lateral motion should be needed in theory, right? <laughs> well, we'll find out. The RCS thrusters are actually most useful at this speed, but they are very small RCS thrusters. I think these are just the standard linear RCS motors. And there we go. Calm down. This Will this be? No, it's starting to fall over. Yes, and the whole thing goes. And this flies away for a little while before crashing. Well, look, we left the landing gear behind. That's some level of victory. And so we continue in these efforts. Of course, coming straight down over the ship isn't what's supposed to happen, as I understand it. As I understand it, it's supposed to come in from the side because they don't want it to come down and then have an engine failure. Uh, in that, in this case, um, yeah, we just kind of fall over. Well, again, watch how the upper stage flies around beautifully on those grid fins. Yay for the stock aerodynamic model. May you rest in peace when 1.0 comes out. Or actually, may you die in a fire or something. I don't know. Stock aerodynamic model, I will not miss you. Except when I'm abusing physics, I guess. Oh, this is looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. At, oh, there. Yes, no much. 
apparently 8.9 meters per second. Too fast for landing on these uh, on these little legs. Okay, come on, keep it straight. Keep it straight. Three meters per second. S gotta kill that lateral velocity. Come on, come on, come on. Get down on the pad. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Don't. I said get down. No, 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 no. Okay, right. Go back. Go back. Go back. No, never mind. Ah. Man, I was only going at like 3 meters per second. How slow do you have to land this thing? SpaceX needs to build tougher hardware. Okay, and once again... Touching down. <laughs> trying to touch down. Oh, a lot of trying to touch down here. Oh, and running out of fuel. Running out of fuel. Running out of fuel. <laughs> So close. Throttle up, throttle up, throttle up, throttle up. Okay, down. Throttle down. Throttle down. Throttle up. Throttle. Oh! No, 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 no. Okay, I'm starting to lose this. Yeah, this is it. You start picking up and it just doesn't want to work. It just. It's gonna die. Ah, oh, dear. Well, there it is. Look, dragging its, its feet through the water there for about a second. It's gonna run out of fuel sometime soon. I might as well give in. Ooh! Kinda of bounced out the water there. That's not something you see every day, a water skiing rocket. Okay, I have a good feeling about this one. Coming down straight on top, straight on top, and slowing down, slowing down. I'm losing it, losing it, losing it, losing it, and... Ah, darn. Well, uh, yeah. Look, even more of the rocket actually ended up on the, the pad, on the, the thing. We'll be able to recover that, right? We'll be able to get some of our money back. Okay, throttle up 100%. Full power. Roll out the gear. Just watch my vertical speed here, right? So I'm keeping it on this. We're just coming down over the top and I just need to make sure I don't wobble around too much. Five meters per second, four meters per second. Turn off st switch stability assist. Three, two, come on! Come on! I'm totally gonna do this. One, two meters per, meters per second. I don't know how high I am. Oh! Touchdown! Touchdown! I am victorious! Yes! Yes! Woohoo! And now we need to know, will SpaceX manage to pull this off tomorrow, or whenever the launch happens? They have a whole host of other technical problems to deal with. My problems were all mod-related. But uh, yeah, I, best of luck to SpaceX. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.